Welcome to Houston Art Tribe. I'm Kay Sarver, and I am here with Kathy Drago in her home studio. <laughs> Very thankful to be here. Oh, I'm <laughs> delighted for you to be here. And um, just remember the first time I saw your work, uh, which was a year ago at The Big Show, uh -huh. 2017, and uh, that woman sitting in the chair and her face just said it all and I was so pulled in and um, it was like she was sitting on glass or something you know she had the, even in her body language uh, I think it was I'm so upset or I am so upset she was seething oh yeah she was <laughs> and uh, God, I thought I have to find out more about this artist and then I uh, came to the talks and uh -huh. you know because I always do if I'm in the show or not I love to yeah. hear the artists talk and you were just great you were delightful oh, thank you and thank we you. briefly met and uh, and then a friend a mutual friend said uh, you know you should contact her about this project you're doing I was like yeah oh cool so, well I'm very excited about this yeah. and, um, I'm glad you like the woman I'm so upset oh, and I gosh. I painted one the following year called I am so numb and it represented a Harvey evacuee. Oh yes, okay. Even though it was a fellow artist who yes. posed, yes. you know, for the source photo. And oh, about a month ago, I was thinking, okay, I need to do a yearbook each year of a woman reflecting the year. That's great. And I thought, but what am I going to do it on? And now all these things are happening politically, and I'm going, mm, I There's think. Maybe I have a, a pretty good direction to go in for you this really year. You really do. You have so you're so on topic. I, I think, uh, especially this last few days. Yeah. But, you know, just concerning women and and then getting into all that about the older women. Certainly wonderful. Oh, are you talking about the the small older women? Well, the older women. Yeah. No, that, yeah. that's more recent. Isn't it, it? it is. Yeah. Yes, it's ongoing. It is. I, yeah. Okay, well, we're just going to jump right to that because I love those pieces. Oh, thank you. The way, you know, it's, I think what's really rare is that someone can do portraiture that actually, you know, pulls you in. It's so unique uh, because portraiture is so done when you think about it. So those women, uh, the way you, you get the folds and the color and the, the personality, the mood of it. Well, you know, I, I've been thinking about it because I have a theater background and I realized that I'm approaching them like an actor would approach developing a character. And so you think about what's the external, how do they look on the outside and what's going on on the inside? What do they want? Yeah. What do they want overall and what do they want right now? And as I'm painting them, I start hearing their voice. Oh, yeah. And I start thinking about what dish they would bring to a family night supper and what their life was like. Did they have children? Are they straight? Are they gay? Are they... Um, what's their attitude? And then I realized, like Freud says, you're all the characters in your dream. Oh. They're probably all part of me. Yeah. You know, a different yeah. Ooh, side of me. <laughs> that's a, that's deep, yeah. And, and I just... I and I don't know if... I, I mean, maybe it's too deep or something, but I guess everything you paint, anybody paints. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a reflection of... It's a reflection. Part of us in some way. Yeah, that makes sense. But I do love that because now that explains so much the theater background or even like a writer developing characters. Mm -hmm. um, you really develop them and... I even know one of them, and I'm so excited <laughs> to see her, Dodie Meeks, you know, she's, oh, she's, she's just delightful. Oh, she's such a, uh, oh, she's lovely. Yeah. She was at, um, Lillian Warren uh, was inviting people to come to a photo shoot for mm -hmm. her next body of work. Oh, yes, yeah. And she asked me to help corral the people, and Dodie was there, and I just thought, oh, Perfect. I must paint that woman. And I, uh, so I emailed Lillian and said, would you feel awkward passing on my email to her? And she went, no, no, no. Well, oh, Dodie and I met for lunch. We had a great time. I followed her to her apartment. I mean, she's 93. She's a good driver. She's amazing. She is. She is amazing. That's what I was going to ask you is how you find these 
women. Oh, you, different different ways. Mm -hmm. Like, um, there's one woman. Uh, she's she's over there at the bottom with the glasses. Oh, okay. Oh. And she came into my studio at the mm -hmm. silos and went, well, why don't you paint me? <laughs> So That's, I said, well, I will. And so I took several source photos, and yeah. she hasn't been back. She said she would come back to see herself, so I hope she comes back I soon. do, too. I do, too. Oh, yeah. And oh. some of these are friends, mothers, <clears throat> or grandmothers, uh -huh. and um, one lady was sitting behind my husband at a restaurant, and I noticed her neck folds. <sighs> And I just got out my iPhone and pretended like I was looking at something. Oh, oh that's fabulous. <laughs> but she had big Texas hair, and I changed that to yeah. old lady hair. Yeah. So she doesn't even know. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> as far as I know, there's no no rules in the, in the game about not, you know, yeah. uh, having permission for that, because what the hell, it's not realism, so. Yes, yes. I mean, I take definite artistic license. And I'm fascinated with obituary pictures. Oh. Um, when I was little, my grandmother had a flower shop, and I would ride my bike over there on Saturdays and help her, and she would toss the paper to me and mm -hmm. say, ask me to read the obituaries to her. And then we would discuss how you could just have a life capsule and four paragraphs, oh and then gosh. that was the picture the family chose. So over the years, I've collected some, yeah. and I don't want to be disrespectful. So now I look at obituaries around the world, and yeah, you know, I'm just grab try to find an interesting face, and then you can do anything you want with it because sure. it's a little tiny black and white grainy yeah photo. But it, I like it because it is the picture that the family chose. I think that is that is brilliant. That is so creative. And you know, I don't get the feeling that they're a stoic little photo. You you capture this in an almost spontaneous way. It, it to me, it's just the use of paint. You can see movement. It just it doesn't feel f so fixed uh, when I see them. But uh, so that amazes me that you you do they, that. They tell me <clears throat> how to paint them um, as I'm painting them, kind of. I mean, I know that sounds weird, but... No, but that's interesting. <laughs> um, I was painting this one lady. She's up over there on the top right. Okay. And her neck looked like chicken skin. Uh, yeah. So then I saw a deep uh, wrinkle in her cheek, and I thought, well, I could make that more like a wishbone. Mm. Oh. And then her hair is like feathers, and she's got an egg yolk colored shirt, and I call her Chicky. Okay. And, okay. And her voice is in my head, like, tell me like this a little bit. <laughs> so she know. became, yeah, she really became this character. And I think if there was a fire, she would be the first one I would grab, just because she was kind of a turning point mm -hmm. of realizing how far I could go but still not hit that cultural tourism type thing. Uh, okay, yeah. She probably yeah. is the boundary. Okay. Well, that, that, that gets me to asking you about what, I know you showed or talked about the background of looking at obituary photos even when you were younger, but what really instilled this uh, doing the older women and I, I read your statement and found that fascinating. Yes. Uh, you um, it's, I think this might be true with a lot of artists, is that you start working on a piece and then that leads to a body of work and it leads to discoveries on why yeah. you do it. It's like, yeah. I didn't sit around thinking I want to paint old ladies because yeah. they kind of started help. They help reveal yeah. what I was thinking. And I think I've figured it out for now is that I want to learn how to be old, how to get old. Ah, oh, that makes such sense. Because when you talked about that, about uh, fearing, or not even looking at older women, especially older women, but older people in general, because we're all sort of reminded we could be there. Yes. Uh, and we will be there if we, if, if we're, we're lucky, lucky. If, we're yeah. lucky if we're lucky. Yeah, uh, but uh, I 
Yeah, my, my mother's 93. And oh, uh, wow. I, one day I was visiting her. She lives far away from here. but uh, And she, uh, I was complaining, feeling a little old, old looking or something. And she just looked at me and she said, you, you have no idea how young you are. <laughs> and suddenly I was like, it was like a slap in the face. And it yes. stays in front of me. Because it is all perspective. I mean, we're as young as we're ever going to be right now. Yes. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so you know, embrace it and yes. man, get what you can going in your life. And, and, yes, uh, but I would, I would actually have it stop me sometimes, uh, especially with artists. Do, do you ever feel, as a woman artist, a uh, woman, you know, that you're, you see, uh, it makes me sad to see an older woman in her eighties who's finally getting recognized. I'm happy, and yet yes. I'm taken back. By yes, mm -hmm. um, and I get asked a lot why just women. Yeah, and I kind of think, well, why not? I mean, it's this is a group of people that are invisible for many yes. reasons. Yes, they're old, and old people tend to be invisible because we're just uncomfortable. They yeah. might drool. They might. Yeah. They're slow. Yeah. Yes. They're, they don't hear us yeah. as yeah. well. Oh, and yes. And women are invisible. It's like once you're not sexually attractive, there's a whole segment of the population you become invisible to. Yes. And that's just fine with me. Yes. But <laughs> it's kind of free. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It really is. Because they're not just staring at your chest. You know? Yes. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I was, um, when I retired from public education, I, I got a job at the Health Museum, and there was a guy there that was just very sexist. And I happened to be on an elevator with him. He didn't know me very well. And we're riding up, and he just looks me up and down <laughs> and then looks away like there's nothing of interest. Oh, and I went, oh thank God. <laughs> Could you be more, you know, yeah. out there about it? Well, I know. It's, it's really uh, an interesting thing as we get older. And you just start feeling good about feeling good. If yes. you have days where you really feel good and you yes. have the energy. And, I love that. that you I've been reading a reading. lot about the old, old, which yes. I found out is 75 up. Oh. And if you don't have something totally debilitating or painful, almost to a person, they describe themselves as being happier than they've ever been. And I, I thought, wow. I know. But they don't have a, a boss that bothers them. Their yeah. children's stories have already been written. They're not worried about whether they're going to turn out okay. They've yeah. already turned out. Yes. Um, each day is a gift. Mm. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So, just go, oh, I know what I want to ask okay. you. You're, uh, now, please excuse me just calling them abstract paintings, but I think they're um, marvelously done. I oh, thank Looking you. at your website, I was, so I did hear you sort of, talk about your theater background a little bit and um, your cat the one you painted was yes, your cat yes. uh, because they're always moving and that's how I feel from those how, what um, what is what is behind that what is painting um, <clears throat> I started out painting figurative and then I just got tired of it and yeah, I didn't yeah. know um, I wasn't at the place I am now with my portraits or anything. Yes, yeah. So I started painting abstracts, but I was really drawn to figurative abstracts, like mm -hmm. Amy Silman is one of my favorite painters. Mm -hmm. And I just love the freedom and mm -hmm. the, uh, the colors, and I still have been painting abstracts. They're like... Um, little box of chocolates I'll yeah, have, have yeah. a chocolate every once in a while yeah. but I think that the abstracts speak to the portraits because uh, I'm I not afraid to have abstract moments in the portraits I love that that I think that helps maybe it helps keep you a bit loose with these portraits uh, because you allow yourself so much freedom the big event is I got into the block program at LaSalle and oh, I'm in my very first semester of it and every two weeks we have crits 
and we're in lovely studios right across from the new Glacelle. Okay. Oh, fact, it's across the... From yes, it's, okay. it's where the junior school <clears throat> used yeah. to be. Yeah, okay. And they're great big classrooms, and there are three of us in each studio. Oh, wow. And so that's really different to have that would be people different. around. <clears throat> And uh, I paint, and I look out, and I can see the glacelle. I can see people walking down the street. Yeah. yeah. And um, so I like that, but I haven't figured out how to have this studio and that studio yet. Yeah, yeah. Plus, you have, <clears throat> don't you have a, you have a studio in... Um, At the Silos. Silos, yes. yeah. And that <clears throat> I got when this studio was being built. Okay, so this is pretty, pretty recent? Yeah, or, this yeah. is, uh, this one I've had for... A little over a year. This is great. I, I know. I love it. And so I don't paint over there anymore. I paint here, but now I also paint at, at the block program the block. at Glossel. Well, that's a great thing to be part of. I'm I know. Sure. I, oh, it's funny because we. It seems like all the artists get to a point where you've just painted too long. You need to clear your head, yeah. and we start wandering into each other's <laughs> studios. Yeah. And then we have informal crit sessions, and so that's, that's just that's so fantastic. Valuable. That is so valuable. Just getting some sort of feedback uh, from someone who who's familiar with yes, kind of how to do that, you know. But uh, I love that you are. Are you all planning? Is there something like a group show coming out? Of We're that? hoping to do some informal group shows during the year, and then at the end of the second semester, we'll have. A formal show, probably. Okay. okay. You know, yeah. Yeah. backed by Glacelle and yeah. you know, in, inviting people. Wonderful. But we do have people come in, in and out of our studios. Okay. At times, so that's a lot of fun. Oh, that would be fun, actually. Yeah, I've gotten some valuable feedback, and I oh, I, I want to tell that's you good. my favorite story. I had uh, about fifty of my old ladies up on one big wall in a scattergram, and yes. I. And this young man came in, he was probably college age, mm -hmm. and he just stared at him and for the longest time. And that's always Whoa. cool for an artist to watch somebody yes. really look. Yes. And finally, I couldn't help myself, and I said, if you have any questions, <laughs> ask. And you know, no. And he kept staring. Yeah. And all of a sudden, he said, I'm sorry, Grandma. I'm sorry. And I went, what? Oh. And he went, they're all my grandmas, and they're looking at me, and they know I've done something wrong, and I know they love me. <laughs> was he was he joking or was he, he serious? He was kind I of. I think both. he was both. But that's yeah. how they made him feel. Oh, he really tapped into that. And I thought, well, that is so cool. And you're right. We rarely get uh, to see uh, people's reactions looking at our work. If you think about it. even if you have an opening or you're part of a group show and. You know, it's not like you stand right by your piece and just, you know, why you just, you, you socialize. It's yeah. like they're having a courtship. Yes. Before yes. they decide, I can marry this painting. Yes. And I yes. think about how personal it is to have a painting in your home. Oh, it is. It is really yeah. a big personal decision. And it's a reflection of who they are to some degree. Right. And yeah, there's that whole strategy about that, which I've never been good at. <laughs> just trying to I market know. your work. And I know. it's like, but the whole reason you do it anyway is what it does for you in the first place. And mm -hmm. then maybe you do think a little of communicating something, I guess. But it's mostly yeah. you're communicating your, your own. You oh, know. I, I brought something to show you because I started thinking about art. And um, I, when my mom would send me to my room when I was in trouble, it was never a punishment because I had an art box in there. And so it's like, okay, well, I'll cut and color yeah, until yeah. she lets me out. Oh, great. And sometimes she would say, my punishment's over, and I go, okay, well, I'm not finished. <laughs> you can come out now. No, I'm, that's brilliant. But um, I, in sixth grade was my first art class, and I had this teacher who was also my homeroom teacher. So uh -huh. art was right after homeroom, so uh -huh. I could start art as soon as I got to school. She would let me come into her room. But she always said, make what you love. And so that year is the year that I made this. Oh, Because wow. our dog had puppies that year. Oh, my god! And gosh. she fussed over that thing. <laughs> it's just, it's, 
It's precious. And my mom died uh, three years ago, and I'm cleaning out everything, and I found it on her shelf, and I went, oh, I'm so glad you oh, saved this. Oh, my gosh. That kind of reminds me of, it's Francesca Fuchs. I well, think, you that's know, what those Francesca is going to come do her crit for the block in a week and a half, and I thought, okay, oh, I'm going to show this yeah, to you, her. You have and to. Yeah. Say, here's my play piece my mom kept. <laughs> I love so. that that you have a theatrical background. That's just uh, kind of a, you know, that's a whole unique experience right there, I'm sure, that probably lends a lot to what you do. Well, you know, I think about, at that time, I was at University of Houston, and there was so much going on in the art scene at University of Houston, with Lawndale being over on Lawndale. <coughs> yeah, yes, yes. And in the drama department, there was a lot going on. We mm -hmm. had uh, Cecil Pickett, who's just a well-known theater director, and we were a small, scrappy group of kids, <laughs> but um, we had a lot of famous people come through and uh -huh. teach us. Mm -hmm. and. When I saw Gerson speak about the art scene yes. at the same time, I thought, why didn't we intermix yeah. more? Because we were definitely there was a, a synergy happening. Yes, at that there time. was. Yeah, yeah. And, and then uh, with improvisation, I, with the comedy workshop, I um, got a real strong background in improvisational theater, and then started teaching improvisation okay. there. Oh. And so, I think a lot of the skills of being brave, yeah, yeah. because you have to have courage yes. to do art. You have to have courage to mess up your pretty painting oh, yeah. with the next step. Yeah, so true. Yeah. And I don't, you know, drink that much. <laughs> really, so I just gotta have the courage inside of me to. <clears throat> and I got Alcohol messed up with drugs. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so um, oh, funny. there's a, there's a bravery in improvisational theater of trying For to sure. create something mm -hmm. right away and then go on. The rule is yes and yes and you uh, know to make a okay. good improv and that's like a painting. Yes, I've painted this and. I've got to add something yeah. more. It's amazing how a creative approach can be so similar in a different medium. Yes, yes. Um, and so that's that's really good to hear. And also the bravery comes in in terms of just getting your work out there. You know, to be putting seen. it out to for people to critique it. And <laughs> um, yeah. I've got a pretty thick skin. I don't know that's about good. you. Um, I didn't know it. No, I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say it's very thick now but but uh it's uh, definitely not you know some things usually they can slide off well i am so i've just been so excited to come here i want to thank you again for uh allowing me to come into your uh studio and your, your home and oh, thank uh, you well come over anytime <laughs> i'm just excited i mean this is what's so important about this once again i like to remind the viewers that i'm i'm happy that you watch and that you share and that you subscribe so that these videos can can go further uh get reach a wider audience and i think that's really vital because this is the kind of thing in, that we have in Houston. Yes, and what a and great town to I live know, in. It really is, it really is. Uh, you know, I, I just, I love that it feels, like the art community almost feels like a small town. It does. And we know it's not, but it just has that feel. There's a great support system here. And it's like almost every weekend, you have to choose which dessert you want. Yeah. Because there's so many things to do art wise. Oh gosh, if you wanna yeah, if you just wanna go out and look at art. Yeah. This is a great town. But anyway, I am uh, thank you. Thank and, you. Uh, Alright, we will see you later and thanks so much. Bye. Bye.